Hi guys, welcome to POV, You're My Therapist, the podcast where I vent, you listen, and you do not get paid to pay. So I'm actually really excited about this week's episode. I feel like I haven't been excited to record an episode in a long fucking time, and I'm excited for this week's episode because I one I've been having like a great couple of weeks, and I feel like everything is just going really well, and like I'm seeing things, I'm I'm realizing things. I think it's like the week of realizing, realizing. You know what I'm saying? So I just have a lot to talk about, and I'm super excited about it. Um, it's funny cause I'm actually not even recording the podcast on the usual day that I record. I'm recording a day early. That's how fucking excited I am about this podcast. Do you understand me? That's why I'm so excited. I'm so excited about this podcast episode today. And basically like today we're going to be talking about personal growth, you guys, like for real and having confidence in yourself, how that happened for me and how I honestly did not even realize it was happening until it happened. And I think, like, sometimes, like, I mean, I guess we're jumping right the fuck into it. I think sometimes I don't give myself enough credit. Like, 2020 literally seems like yesterday. Like, I still remember. It's weird. Like, 2020 feels like yesterday, but also, like, the longest time ago. And, like, the specific moments of time, like, seem like forever ago. Like, things I was going to through at the time feel like forever ago. But the year 2020 itself, it feels like we're still in it. Like, it just feels like one long year, you know? And... I think back to where I was in 2020 and, and I honestly think sometimes I just don't give myself enough credit for everything that I've gone through and like all the growth that I've, that I've had. And like, and last night I was talking to a friend of mine and she was the one that was telling me that she was like, you've been doing a lot of work. She was like, you have been, she was like, you realize you've been working on yourself for two years. She was like, I don't know why you're surprised with the outcome of these things because you've been working on yourself for two years and I have been working on myself for two years and I'm fucking happy about that and I'm excited about that and it's just, it just feels so new. Like everything just feels so new and I'm so happy about it. But, um, but this, you know what? A lot happened and I'm going to get straight into it. So, um, I went out over the weekend and if you know me, I'm not a girl who goes out. She's not a girl who goes to the club. Like she's not that girl. She just isn't. Um, and I, I just was never, I just was never like, I, I was like, I'm too awkward. I'm just too weird. Like it's just like not my jig. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not a calm girl. I'm not a cool girl. I don't know how to calm the fuck down. I don't know how to let loose. And like, For a long time, I really felt like that was just who I am. But I realize now, like, I don't think it was anxiety. I just think, like, there's a, there's such a level of being so self-aware and so aware of yourself and being uncomfortable. There's a car going by. It's late. It's late. Um, of being so uncomfortable in your own skin that, like, you don't, like, literal, literal discomfort in your skin and in your body and bitch, that's where I was. So I felt like that for a long time. And, like, and I remember, like, at the top of 2020, one of my friends invited me out to go to, like, a rave. And I went to this rave and I was so fucking stiff, dude. I didn't know how to move. Like, I didn't know how to dance. I didn't know how to, like, do a little wine, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know how to move this body. And I was just so self-conscious. Like, I literally, like, this was one of those moments where I was like, I can hear my bones creaking. Like, it was one of those. And I remember she was like, let loose. Like, let go. And I just couldn't. I just couldn't. And I really wanted to. And I really, I was so jealous. Like, I was looking at the girl next to me. And she was just, like, going in. Like, she was dancing. Like, she was shaking her bot, her bot, her body. And I was just like, damn, like, why can't I do that? And, like, I remember being so frustrated with myself. And literally having moments where I was like, shake your ass. Like, <laughs> literally telling myself move your body ho like what are you doing and like and I would get so frustrated with myself I'm gonna turn the volume down just a little because I'm scared I'm scared Uh, I hope I'm not peeking um but like I I just didn't know how to move myself I didn't feel comfortable with my skin I didn't I just it was just different like it was just different and like and as time has been like going on and I think especially with this podcast has helped me a lot like it's helped my confidence a lot it's helped me just like really care more about myself and like who I am and like my image and like and not even in a vain way but in a way like oh you need to take care of yourself like you need to watch yourself like you need to be the person that you want to be like that girl that you've always wanted to be you need to be her now girl you need to step you need to step your cookies up okay and, like, that, the podcast really kicked that shit into high gear, for sure. 
And like, and I think like everything happening on TikTok and like my, my, my audience growing and all these things like really made me realize like, oh, this is what I want. Like I, I want to be a star, darling. I want to be famous. So I was like, that's what you want. And you've kind of always wanted that because like I've always been a singer. I've always been on the stage, darling. I've always, I've always been under the lights, okay? And now it's just being under the lights in a different sense. And once all of that started happening, I was like, oh, I can't slack anymore. Like I can't be caught lacking. Like I need to get my shit together. I need to get a look. I need to do this. I need to do that. And so I started taking myself more seriously. And I think because of that, like I was... At the beginning, I definitely felt like there was a level of faking it and like faking my confidence, faking the look, faking like all of it. But like little by little, I started like, you know, doing little things like for myself and like and not even really doing them because, oh, I want to look a certain way because it genuinely made me feel good about myself. And it just made me it made me like stand taller. It made me walk with my head higher. And, like, little things, like getting your nails done, you know, like putting on a fucking whitening strip at night, looking like a crazy bitch when I'm getting ready to go to bed. Like, making sure I wash makeup off of my face. My nails are crazy right now. We ain't talking about that, okay? My nail tech is, she's all booked until next week, okay? We're not talking about this, okay? Um, but like putting a face mask on, doing my skincare, like moisturizing my entire body from top to bottom. Like, you know, sometimes you be skipping, you be skip, you be like, okay, are my elbows out? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so sometimes like you skip stuff and now like, it's just like, I'm like, no, like I want to be this girl. Like, this is who I want to be. Like, I'm not going to have acid because like, this is who I actually want to be. And this is how I want to look and this is how I want to feel. And I know how I feel when I look how I look. So it's like, it's like being, I'm really finding the Maddie Perez of it all. You know what I'm saying? Like, I felt like for a while, beside the daddy issues for a while, like I was really feeling like Cassie, like I was tripping over my heels. I was my, I was too big for my britches. Is that what it's did? Is that what that saying is? I was too small for my britches. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like for a while, like I was too small for my britches. Like I knew, I knew the confidence that I wanted to have, but the divine that I was did not, couldn't fit the mold. She couldn't even step into the mold. Like that just wasn't her. Like when you, like I'm, I'm literally thinking of this scene in Euphoria when Nate's all beat up and Cassie and Maddie are running, um, down the fucking hall with the stretcher. Cassie is like tripping over her shoes and Maddie is running confidently in her shoes. Cause that is a bitch who knows who she is. She knows who she is. And I really feel like I'm finally the Maddie Perez of it all. And like quite literally, okay, I had a moment not too long ago that I was like, I am that girl. I was like, I am that girl. And I'm officially that fucking girl. And it just put everything into a into a neat fucking bow. It was the affirmation that I fucking needed. Okay. And it was just delicious. And it was good. It was so good. And I can't wait to tell you. Okay. So, um, so before I move on to that though, I, you guys, okay. So I got my, I went over the weekend, I got my eyebrows done. And when I tell you, I have never been, I've like, I had people tell me, oh, you have nice eyebrows. Literally six times in one day, people stopped me and were like, oh, your eyebrows look so good. Your eyebrows look so nice. And like, and I was thinking about how like, uh, along with like this, oh, like being that girl thing, it can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people, but like it's for me, it's really focusing in on my beauty because like, baby, this is the money maker, you know what I'm saying? This is the money maker. My money maker ain't my booty. It's like shake your money maker, like, you know what I'm saying? No, that's not that. This is the money maker. And, and I, so I've been paying like a lot of close attention like to my skin and my face and I got these eyebrows done, baby. And it's honestly the best thing that I've ever done in my life is getting my eyebrows done, laminated, tinted tweezed waxed all of it like literally my eyebrows look so fucking good and I got stopped so many times so I went to the club I went to the club and like and this girl in the bathroom like oh I love women I love women like honestly the girl's bathroom at a club at a party at any fucking function is the place to be if I could record a podcast from the girl's bathroom I definitely would and I think that that would be a delicious idea my friend actually gave me that idea not too long ago she was like if you ever need a pick me up just go into the girl's bathroom at any function she was like you will walk out feeling the baddest bitch whoever existed for real and I was like yes this is true and she's fucking right so I went to the bathroom 
And I don't talk about this a lot, but I'm from Atlanta. And I went into the bathroom, and this girl, like, she looked me up and down, and my fit was fire, y'all. I looked good. Like, the makeup was on 10. She was iced out. She looked yummy, you know what I'm saying? Like, I looked delish. I really looked good. And I, you know, I was just that girl. I was the Maddie Perez of it all, okay? So I go into the bathroom, and this girl, she's like, she's like, are you from here? And she's like, are you from here? <laughs> she's like, are you from here? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, it's something about you Atlanta women. She was like, you Atlanta women, like y'all know how to put it together. And I was like, shut up. I was like, are you talking to me? <laughs> like literally dying. I was like, are you talking to me? She was like, yes. She was like, you look so good. She was like, from your hair to your feet. And I was wearing like these lime green um, platform mules. Delicious. Literally just ordered them in pink and I'm considering the purple. And she was like, you look good. She was like, from top to bottom, like everything about you looks so good. And I was like, oh my God, stop. Like really stop. And I brought that up to my friend and we were talking about it. And I was like, and and I was like, you know, it is kind of true. Like, Atlanta women, like, they really have, they have a look. Like, and it's a good look. And I love the look. Like, it's a delicious look. And she was like, yeah, because she's from New York. So she was like, New York women look different. And I was like, yeah, it's true. And I think, like, it's because New York women, like, are heavily influenced, I feel, by, I feel, God, do not come barking at me, please. I feel like New York fashion and having work close closely having worked closely with fashion girlies and knowing them they it's very much about getting the look off like it's this ready to wear it's runway it's all of those things but it's not so much about like it's more feeling like a model and like models they don't go on go sees wearing full faces of makeup having long long nails like, that's just not very, like, that's not in the industry a lot. And I feel like a lot of the fashion girlies adhere to that. And I feel like for a while, that's why, like, brands like Glossier really boomed in New York. Because all the girls wanted to feel that natural beauty like the models did. And, like, even when, like, I noticed, like, even when, like, my New York girlies, they wear makeup. Like, it's never, like, the crazy stuff that, like, I see in Atlanta, like, for sure. It's just different. And, I mean, I, I'm not speaking for all of New York, obviously. But I definitely think, like, Manhattan and, like, what I'm thinking of, like, fashion in New York... I'm thinking of that but and I and so we were talking about that and the difference between the Atlanta girls and the Atlanta girls got like the two inch nails they got the jams honey they have like it's a lot like it's a lot and it's like luxe and it's sexy and it's all of these things and she was like I wonder why that is and I was like oh it's definitely because in Atlanta we have to keep up with the scrippers the Atlanta girlies have to keep up with the scrippers the scrippers make so much money and they get their hair done they get their nails done the beauty is on 10 like honestly the strippers influence everything that's like mainstream now like all of like the club wear all of the looks it's heavily influenced by the Atlanta strippers and it's fucking true and these bitches are bad these these are some bad bitches and you out here being a regular regular bitch trying to keep up with some bad scribbles do you know how hard that life is <laughs> it's hard and like and I remember not too long ago I saw a pod not a podcast a tiktok where this girl was like um this girl was like, the girls in Atlanta are going broke trying to keep up with the strippers. And I was like, don't go broke trying to keep up with the strippers. But, like, make investments in, like, what you're doing. Like, like I get really annoyed when, this is such a different tangent, but I get annoyed when I see girls buy wigs for, like, $100. And then a month later, they have to buy another wig for $100. And I'm like, okay, I get it. But, like, you bought two wigs now for $200. And it's lasted you only two months. Them shits are crusty and sitting in the back of your closet. They look awful. Why not? Hear me out. Why not just spend between 600 and 700 Go natural for a couple months and the money you would have used to buy a cheap wig. Save it up and buy a quality wig that's upwards of $1,000. Y'all, I know that that probably is an unhinged statement. And some of you are going to be like, what the fuck? But when I tell you... I had, let me tell you something, I just bought this wig, right? I just got this new wig. And if you follow me on TikTok, if you follow me on Instagram, you know my hair eats, bitch. It's giving scalp. It's giving all of it, honey. This was a financial decision, okay? Okay? And, like, I could buy another one now because, like, I'm very blessed to have a new job that is, like, it's that girl's job, you know what I'm saying? But, like, I'm very blessed for that. But this wig was a financial decision. And I bought hair from this company, Kendra's Boutique, hashtag, I need to be an ambassador, okay? Kendra's Boutique, I bought hair from them um, my first year of college when I was 19. I'm 26, okay? I just retired that hair this year. 
That hair lasted me six years, three bleaches, two bleach baths, multiple dye back to blacks, okay? Granted, I had to buy two different closures, but the bundles remained. And I only had to buy multiple closures because I kept fucking on my closures, okay? So that hair, um, yeah, 600 divided by six years per month. How much does that come down to? I want to say, okay, how many? 12 months times six is, oh God, 132, I think. Oh, that's probably not right. 132 months divided by six. 600 divided by 132. I don't know. Is that like 10 bucks a month for a wig? Maybe. And I think it's worth it. So it's a lot to pay up front, but I think over time, it's just worth it. And like, and oh my God, like my hair looks so good all the freaking time. Are you going to tell me my hair don't look good? And my, my hair does not tangle, okay? And nothing happens to my hair. My hair is literally like girl it's mine I'm sorry it didn't grow out of my scalp but it's mine and nobody can tell me any freaking different okay so I really believe in that and like and I got laser done and but I got laser done on my face and having laser done on your face when you have like hair growing on your face one that's it's a big hit to your confidence it's not good at all like it's not good like I my confidence was super low and like and just imagine like I remember I used to be so sad because I was like oh my god god you hate me you made me fat you gave me PCOS and I have facial hair I can't find a fucking boyfriend and I'm broke are you fucking kidding me I had, I felt like God really was like, you may be my strongest soldier. And I was like, but I'm not, I'm mentally weak. Stop playing with me. (laughs) Stop playing with me. So I got, I got really sick of it. And I paid, actually I didn't even pay. I took out a credit card and I used that credit card to get facial hair removal because I was sick of it. I paid off that credit card with my stimmy per. Um, but I took out a credit card to get rid of my facial hair and it really helped my confidence. I really think that that was one of the first big, it was one of the first big investments that I made on myself and it helped me a lot. It helped me a lot. And it's not like I was just letting this hair grow. Like I was waxing it, I was plucking it, but like it just does something to your soul, dude, to know that you're a feminine woman to want to be even more feminine and hear this fucking hormonal masculine thing that is happening to you that you can't change it takes a toll on you and it really is can be upsetting and I'm very lucky that the type of PCOS that I have that you can just zap the hair off and it'll go away and it's not a big deal like I had to get a retouch not too long ago but I know like that's not the case for everybody so I feel very lucky that that's the case for me but it really did something to my soul bro like it was it did a lot to me that I did not appreciate so um and doing that it helped my skin a lot like my skin my complexion like cleared up a lot and then you know like I started working and I I was like all right I'm gonna invest more into me I want to look this way I want to feel this way and this is what it's gonna be this is who I am and I'm just gonna be that girl and nobody can tell me any different so and I feel like now I'm finally like settled I'm like yeah my name is divine hi how are you this is just who I am I'm fine with it and I'm really happy to be here because like you know for a while I like (sighs) you don't real like or I didn't realize when I started feeling comfortable with myself and I think like that's such a funny thing because I feel like the whole goal of this whole thing of my whole therapy journey of all of it was at the root of it to feel comfortable with me to feel okay with me and I don't know the moment when that happened and I wish like I could pinpoint a time and be like yay this is when divine this is when I became comfortable in my skin but I think it's like little things that happen that you realize oh I am comfortable in my skin like so like I went out I was with my friends in New York and like and after dinner one of my friends he he's what does he do? What does he do? <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. He's a, he was a journalist. He recently got a new job, but he was a journalist at a really popular culture and music fashion magazine. So invite, ready to go. And so he was like, oh, there's a rave. You guys want to come? So I was like, yeah, let's go. But I knew that I was really nervous because I started thinking about me in 2020 at a rave, unable to let loose, so fucking nervous and anxious and like, uptight like just unable to like function properly and I was like oh my god like I hope that doesn't happen again like 
I'd be really sad if that happened again. Like, and I remember, like, going back to 2020, I remember I I was at this wave. I couldn't move my body. And I was like, this is so weird because I get down when I'm alone in my room. Like, why is this happening to me here of all places? This is the place where you're supposed to get down, but I couldn't do it. So, um, so when he was like, let's go to this rave, I was like, oh, I'm scared. Cause I'm like, what if I freeze up again? Like, what if that's something that happens? But to my surprise, that did not happen. And I went, you know, I got my little cranberry vodka. She was dancing. She was grooving. She was feeling it all. And I was really surprised. I was impressed with myself. I just was impressed with myself. So imagine... Um, oh my God, something else happened too, which I'm like, "Mm, do I say this now or do I say this later? Anyways, I'll say it now. So, um, so like, I feel like there's like three things that happened that really like made me feel like, oh my God, maybe I am. I have changed. I'm healed. Um, so the going to the rave and like feeling comfortable and like able to dance, like let loose and actually like feel joy. (laughs) Surprise, surprise. Um, but the other thing that happened before that was I took myself out to dinner and I actually vlogged this. I went to a really nice restaurant, sat there, had my dinner by myself, three course meal, delicious, enjoyed every moment of it. Did not feel awkward once, did not feel self-conscious once. And that is a really hard thing. People don't understand that. Like when, when you have anxiety, when you're anxious, when you're, when you're just not comfortable in your skin, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. You don't know the reasons why you feel like that. You just know that you do and you don't know how to fix it. And it's almost like, I feel like getting rid of those feelings, it's a slow erosion. It is, it is you making the right decision little by little to push yourself a centimeter farther than you pushed yourself before. And suddenly you realize you have, you've walked five miles and who you can't even see who you were before that bitch, that bitch that was so scared is so far in the distance that you're like, is she even there anymore? Like, that girl I was in 2020, like, I'm literally just like, I can't relate to you. I can't relate to you. But yeah, so that, that, that having dinner by myself, I was surprised when I was able to do that. Surprised when I was able to get down at the rave, meet new people, have fun. And then, um, and then, um, so a little while, not a little while ago, but anyways, over the weekend, um, one of my TikTok mutuals, um, invited me out to like a club and like, I told y'all divine is not a club girl. So he invited me out to this club and I was like, mm, kind of scared. Cause I knew that like my friends were busy. They already had plans and, or they were working. Um, and I asked one of my friends and she was just dead tired and she was like, I can't, I can't. So I was like, I need to meet new people. I need to make new friends. I, I've had a really strong dislike of Atlanta. I'm not going to lie. Just because I've had a lot of really shitty experiences there. And just, I've literally everyone that I met going out. No, I don't want to say going out. Like every, a lot of the people that I met here, I just like 80% of them, I'm not friends with them anymore for so many different reasons. And I just had a lot of bad experiences, like a lot of like shysty shit. So I just had a lot of bad connotations because also when I was going through all those bad experiences, I literally lived in the center of Atlanta. So I I lived in Midtown, like I wasn't on the outskirts or nothing. Like I lived in the middle of town and my whole world was very central to the city. So anywhere I needed to go, I was in the middle of it and I could just go there. And every corner, so every corner I have like a memory and a lot of them are not great memories. So I felt like very tainted by my experience and just, I'm just sick of, like, I was, I'm just sick of the city. Like I really am. Like I ain't got no good things to say. And most of what I don't got to say got to do with the fucking highway because driving in this city, I'd rather die. Actually, no, that's not the point because if I'd rather die, I wouldn't be afraid to drive in the city. My point is I don't want to die. And driving in this fucking city feels like I'm about to meet my maker any fucking second. Do you know, not to get sidetracked, do you know how many times I am driving in Atlanta's eight, eight, eight lane highway? I don't know what psychopath decided to put eight lanes on a motherfucking highway, but this one did. Full of military brats who drive cam- Camaros and Mustangs and go woo woo and just drive fucking fast for no reason. The amount of times on this eight lane highway that I've almost dragged that I literally just close my eyes and I'm like, if I die, I die. If I die, I die. And that's just going to have to be the end of it. I died on a highway in Georgia of all places. Like literally the amount of times that I've thought that 
um, I couldn't even tell you because it's probably like three times every time I drive and I'm driving a lot. So I, I think really that fucked me up. But also, I also like, I don't want to say I fell in love because it wasn't love. It was something, but it wasn't love. But like, I fell in love with somebody here and they made me hate this city. <laughs> they made me hate this city. Like for real. Like I, like that Billie Eilish song. Yeah, that's, that song, every lyric I relate to in a very hard, intense way. And, and that really tainted the way that I felt about the city. And I, and I felt like if I, if I could leave here, if I could go somewhere else, which is why I do want to go somewhere else, but I keep getting sucked back in here. (sighs) I keep getting sucked back in here. It's so annoying, but like, I keep getting sucked back in here. And every time I try to leave, I get pulled back in. And it's like, you know, I feel like if I could leave this city, then then I could leave this person behind. I could leave all the memories behind. I could leave all the bad friendships behind. I could leave all everything behind. Like, I could leave it all behind. But I also feel like I'm stuck here for a reason. And, I mean, you're never really stuck and you make decisions, but... I'm one of those people that I know sometimes that discomfort comes along with the best decision. And I know that the best decision right now is staying here. And that comes with a lot of discomfort and a lot of angst and a lot of irritation. So one thing about me is I refuse to struggle. Financially, I refuse to do it because I survived the 2008 financial crash. Okay. When I say survive, I mean barely got through it. Okay. Um, and I don't mean me, I mean my family. Like we, it was very traumatic and that's all you need to know. So I just never want to feel how I felt then again. And I would rather be uncomfortable for an extended period of time than financially struggling. I don't believe in that. I'm not that girl. I was not cut out for that. And I just don't want to, I just don't, I feel like there for me, there are decisions that I can make to avoid that. And I will do that. Like, at this moment, moving to the place I want to move to is not feasible because they are having a rent crisis and I'm not about to be a part of that. I'm going to wait until the rent crisis is solved. That shit plummets back down to where it should be and then move because that is what makes sense. So anyways, um, so what was I saying? Yeah. So I, yeah, never had a, Atlanta left a horrible taste in my mouth, which I could leave here and never liked it, whatever. So I, um, so I have this mutual TikToker friend who invited me out and I was like really nervous because I was like, I've never, one, I've never gone out, out alone. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I've gone to bars alone. I've had dinner by myself. I do those things. I go shopping by myself, but like going to a club alone, going to a club alone is a whole different experience, bitch. Like it really is. And it's to me, like that was very scary. So I didn't want to go alone, but I wanted to go. And I knew I was going to go like the moment they invited me. So I was like, I'm just going to go. I went and it was fine. And I had a great time and I met great people and I had a lot of fun. And it was funny because like that before I was talking to my friend and I was like, I just don't want to get kidnapped. And she was like, what the fuck do you mean you're going to get kidnapped mine? And I was like, I don't know. Like, that's like my fear. Cause like, first of all, my mother, um, when I tell you Dateline is her shit, investigative discovery is her shit. You can tell my mother anything and she will bring it back to a murder that she's heard of. I shit you not. I kid you not. Literally, I told her, I, I kid you not. I said to her the other day, I said, you know, it's funny because I, I kept thinking about it and I kept laughing. One of my friends said, he said, don't call me an artsy nigga. Oh, I got to mute that. He said, don't call me an, an artsy nigga because an artsy nigga is still a nigga. And I was like cracking the fuck up because I was like, LOL, yes, they are. Meaning like they're fuck boys. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Oh my God. I told my mom this and she somehow related this back to a murder anything at all she will find a murder that coincides with the story you were telling her and she's gonna find a life lesson for you to learn so mind you I am living in fear all the time like there's a little voice in my head that's like you're gonna get murdered I'm gonna get killed and I'm like let's not speak that into insistence bitch shut up so my greatest fear is like getting um kidnapped or like killed or something I don't know something horrible and tragic and it's funny because one of my friends like she and I had this this delusion this thought that we were that I was too fat to get kidnapped and she was too tall to get kidnapped because this girl is almost like six three she's very tall and and so we were both under the assumption that we were too fat, too tall to get kidnapped. And then one time in the summertime, she calls me and she's like, divine, 
some dude just tried to kidnap me and I was like you're six foot tall that's not possible some person some man like who delivered something to her house saw her and tried to kidnap her and like tried to sneak in her window and grab her and I was like oh my god so what you're telling me is if somebody really has the motivation to they will try to kidnap a six foot tall woman they will try to kidnap a 250 pound plus bitch they gonna try to kidnap the mission man I thought I was safe until that happened to my friend and I was like never mind nobody is fucking safe from these psychopaths like what the hell like I literally thought I was too fat to get kidnapped And I really believed that for a hot minute. Like, I literally felt safe in that thought. Wrong. Incorrect. Not true, apparently. So, um, so yeah. So, I was like, okay, now that I know that I'm a possible kidnapping victim, I'm horrified to, to go out alone. But I went out alone and I had a great time and it was super fun and the bitches was bad and I was part of the bad bitch club. And it was just fun. It was a lot, a lot of fun. And like, I was just surprised with myself and like, and I didn't have the fear of dancing. Yeah, that was out of the way. Like the girl was having a good time. She was meeting people. She was drinking. I also feel like maybe alcohol has a lot to do with it because, you know, once I got that little drink in me, like she loosey goosey, like for real. Um, yes. So, but like, I was just surprised at myself and like my ability to be a whole, a different kind of person. And like, I remember a long time ago, like, you know, you and your friends go through these journeys together, but separate. And sometimes you come to a realization and then on your own while talking to a friend. And then later on, you guys basically circle back and you realize that you came to the realization at the same time. Like we had one of my friends, like we've always been like, like long, perpetually single, trying to find ourselves, all of these things, just trying to make life work for us. And having like our conversations throughout the years and her really actually helping me and giving me so many good tips and not even realizing it, her not taking her own advice, giving me great advice that I'm taking, me giving her great advice that I'm not taking. Like, and she's taking like, I remember like a, a while ago I was having a conversation with her and the thought went through my head and I was like, Cause I'm, I'm edging on 30 bitch. She's 26. And like, I know that's, it's not a big deal. 30 is not really, 30 is life changing. Cause you made it three decades and you know, there's a lot of connotations about turning 30 and a lot of them are bad, but she and I, like we I was talking to her one day and I was like, I'm 26. And I was like, that's only like four more years until I turn 30. That's three more years until I turn, turn 30. And I'm like, I don't want to go into my thirties and secure. Like, and I think what really started it for me thinking like that was, I remember like, I've talked about this before, but feeling very uncomfortable during sex and not feeling anything at all. And just feeling like, 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 like not feeling how I wanted to feel. And, and then like finally like getting comfortable in my body and then feeling like I wanted to be, uh, you know, acting up. So, and I remember like one time on Twitter, I saw this lady and she was like 35 and she was like, um, she was like the cool aunt and it was just like a funny video. It wasn't pornography. It wasn't cornography, but, um, she was like showing her friends. She was like, this is how you need to ride a man. This is how you need to do this. This is how you need to do that. And she was going crazy. I was like, how do your knees move like this? Number one, <laughs> how are your knees moving like this bitch? Cause my shit would have been going crack, crack, crack. It would have sounded like rice crispy treats going snap, crackle and pop bitch. My back would have, you know, my back gets blown out in the worst ways and not in the fun way that we all think of. Okay. So I remember like seeing this video and I was like, damn. And she said something at the end. She was like, she was like, I had the best sex in my thirties. And I was like, I want to have the best sex in my thirties. What? What are we talking about? Like, (laughs) what are you, what's going on with you? I want to know. So I was just like, I don't, that started for me. And I was like, is there really something magical about your thirties? And And I think there is, maybe there is. And I, so I was like, I don't want to go into my thirties feeling insecure because can you just imagine like bringing the baggage of your twenties into your thirties? Like your twenties are traumatic and turbulent for a reason because you're learning and you're going and you're trying to fit into this world that honestly feels very against you sometimes, most of the time, all of the time. So I think thirties is making that work for yourself. And I've been thinking about that a lot. And even my friend, like, she's closer to 30 than I am. And I was talking to her the other day. I was like, how do you feel about turning 30? And she was like, I'm excited, actually. She was like, I'm actually excited. She's like, I'm excited to leave this fucking decade behind. And, and like, that's so true. And, like, and I'm not 
quite there yet but that was a big thought that I had that I was like this insecurity shit needs to end today I can't turn another year feeling how I feel feeling how I felt at the lowest depths of my life relating so hard to 16 year old me who had hormonal reasons to feel insecure and feel bad about herself and not like herself and and who had out outside forces really influencing how I felt about myself like those insecurities why am I 24 feeling 16 like now I still confuse myself sometimes when people are like how old are you I'm like I'm 20 I'm 16 I say that all the time because I, I literally forget but I'm I mean that like with the joy and the excitement of a 16 year old feels I'm not feeling that like the insecurity the the all of that that you feel when you're a fucking teenager I don't feel that shit no more no and I finally feel like I'm in myself like I feel like I'm present in my age which is such a crazy thing to think about I feel like an adult uh it's weird It's a really weird feeling, but like, I feel like I'm growing and I love that. And I really love that. And, and I, I don't know when it happened, but I'm thankful that it happened. And I, and it's just like, I think you, you get to a point where like you, you start feeling sick of yourself. You don't know how to make the change, but then like little by little, like I said, and then it just starts happening. And like, and I think like, even for a good bit of this podcast, like a good bit of me talking to myself, I'm like faking it, but it's like, now it's a comfortable shoe. Like now all of this is so comfortable and I fucking love that. I'm so happy. And like, I just feel really good. And I have days when I feel like shit, I'm not going to lie. Like yesterday, like I started to feel like shit and I was like, no, I'm not going to feel like shit because I have a podcast to do that had really good things that happened to me this week. And I'm not going to taint that by allowing myself to feel like shit because I feel slightly insecure about something that happened. Like, I'm just not going to do that. And I think like, just like, as I'm hard on myself, I think what makes it like sometimes worse is when you run across somebody who's just as hard on you for no fucking reason. And like, y'all, let me tell you about this person. I need to tell you about a couple things. Actually, I got a lot to tell y'all still because I got 20 minutes of talking to do. So I, there's somebody, we're going to call him Voldemort and we call him Voldemort because he is who shall not be named. Okay. And it was to the point where I talked about him so much that one of my friends was like, bitch, you cannot say this man's name anymore. And I was like, no. <laughs> and she was like, you cannot say his name. So I was like, he who shall not be named. And now it's Voldemort. But I, when I was in New York, I ran into Voldemort. And Voldemort was somebody that I knew in my college years when, cause I had like, I don't want to call it a sabbatical, but I had a moment in time where I lived in, um, Atlanta but I was working up in New York and I did my internship in New York so I was up in New York for a while so I met Voldemort during that time and Voldemort knew me as a very insecure very I was just not in myself I didn't like myself I was angry I I was not who I am now like for real I was not who I am now and that is the me that Voldemort knew okay he I and he and we were fucking yeah he were fucking and he just didn't take me seriously as a person because I didn't know who I was obviously but also I feel like you ought to give people some grace sometimes and I feel like he just never ever really gave me any grace to try to figure out who I was he just saw me as this young dumb slutty co-ed and I use co-ed very specifically because for some reason like older men use that word to like degrade young college age females but either way but, um, but yeah, so like, I was just like this little ditz who hated herself and like had a lot of issues and was just like dumb. And I remember one time, well, not one time, but a lot of times like Voldemort, I would say something that I'm trying out to do. And he'd be like, oh, you're this now. Oh, you're that now. Oh, oh, you're trying this now. Oh, you were just doing that last month. Why are you doing that this now? And that really fucked with my confidence. Cause I think like for a long time, like, I did really want Voldemort's validation, and, and I just never really got it, because he was not willing to give it to me, because I think he liked having that over my head, and, um, so all those things, like, that he would say would, like, affect me to an extent, and while I was in New York, I was, I don't remember what I was doing, but I look good, that's all you need to know, okay, I look good, hair was laid, makeup was laid, ice was on 10, she just looked yummy, like, she looked good, and, like, I was getting complimented left and right that day, and I ran into him, imagine, I'm gonna, I'm not even gonna, I'm not gonna name where I ran into him, but the Anna Delvey Foundation, I ran into him at the Anna Delvey Foundation, okay, and he literally was like, how did you get here, that's what he asked me, 
He said, how did you get here? And I said, well, I took an Uber from Queens to Lower East Side. What's good? And when I tell you, for the entirety of the time that I was there, I just kept having these moments where I would look over and he was just looking at me. And I was just like, it must suck. It must suck, actually. It really must suck to feel like you have, you never took me seriously. And yet here I am in your space. Keep underestimating me. And like any, like, yeah, it's just constantly underestimating me, never being able to break away from the person that he met me as and just keeping still this insecure image of me and now here I am like years later and like I'm a woman like I'm a woman like I'm sturdy in my boots I am confident in myself and I hope that jarred him I hope it ruined his day honestly I hope it floored him and yeah that made me really happy um yeah so yeah yeah suddenly was very active on my socials again watching all my shit liking some stuff and I was like no bags not gonna play that game why not so that was like a fun little time and it just made me feel like really good like I love feeling in control and I love the power that comes with like being in control of yourself and knowing exactly what to say I will tell you as a woman the best thing you can ever learn is knowing being really sharp on your feet and witty and being able to say comebacks like very quickly because men flirt with me all the time and they say the dumbest shit and and I just have to, like, yeah, okay, sure, you're saying that now, but let's see if you come through with it. Literally, I went out the other day, and I ran into these two guys, and one of them was in my way, so I literally said, you're in my way, you need to move. And he turned around, like, ready to, like, be annoyed with me, and his friend looked at me, and he was like, oh, it's okay, I'll take care of him if he's in your way. And I was like, oh, yeah? And he was like, yeah, he was like, I'll beat him up, you want me to beat him up? And I looked at him, I said, yes. I do want you to beat him up. Beat up your friend. <laughs> he was like, what? I was like, what? You said you were going to beat him up. Beat him up. He was like, you're chaotic. I was like, yes, I am. Thank you very much. Don't make promises you can't keep. And I love doing that. And I think like that adds like the sexiness. It adds to the allure. It adds to all of it. And I and I just I love that now that that's something I can do because like before I literally would have been like, a, a, no, it's okay. I just need to get by. No, it's fine. And then no, beat up your friend for me. Fight for my love, babe. Do you want me? Do you want me or not? Fight for me. Tussle, tussle, bitches, tussle. So I don't even want to say that like it's a newfound confidence because I think like it one it was there all along like it was a seedling of confidence and it had to grow and it had to bloom and it had to be what it is now but I also think that I had it in full size like I had it put on for a while but I think like growing into it getting it accustomed making the fabric fit my skin like that took a while and I'm glad that I'm finally there like I cannot explain to you the joy that I feel the happiness that I feel feeling finally feeling comfortable in my own skin like finally feeling comfortable in my own skin knowing that I can go out and dance and have a good time knowing that I can hold my own alone because I was alone at that club for a minute until my friend came and was like come here so I and knowing that like I can hold my own like that knowing that I can go to a dinner by myself I can sit down and eat knowing that I can go to a bar sit down and eat and talk to a stranger perhaps if I feel like it knowing that I can do these things now is such a comfort to me because I think also like it makes it easier for me to be alone like I have found myself being a lot less sad about being single now that I feel comfortable in this space with me and in my company like I've always been alone. I've always been a loner. I've always done things alone and been in my own company. But I think there is a certain ease and I talk about this ease a lot, but this ease is like fucking life changing. Like it really changes, it changes the fucking game. And I think like, it's not just the ease and being alone because you can be alone, be calm, but be aware that you're alone and not have and, and not shine the way that you shine, like the way that you're meant to shine. And I feel like now, like I'm finally shining the way that I'm meant to shine and I fucking 
delicious. Mwah, I love it. Mwah, I love it. And I'm really thankful for myself. I'm thankful for Divine 2020. Yeah, you pussy bitch. I'm thankful for you because at the tail end of 2020, you really made that decision to go into therapy because you were tired of feeling how you felt. At the tail end of 2020, you decided, oh, I'm going to start going to the gym because I don't like how I feel in my body. And I'm going to learn to get used to my body. And even though we've fallen off the wagon, we're getting back on. I just joined a new gym today. So per, let's go. So like, I'm really thankful for the, for me who was insecure, who, who was scared and who was just like not comfortable in herself. I'm so thankful for her because she made so many good fucking decisions. <laughs> She made a lot of good decisions and because of her, we are where we are now. And I think that's like one thing that I do want to give myself credit for is like somehow I really, in the midst of a lot of stupidity, I've been making good decisions. Go off, go off divine. Like literally in the midst of a lot of dumb shit, I make some good fucking decisions. And even I make a lot of good decisions blindly, which I'm like, damn, God does like me. He may have made me fat. He may have made me unreasonably hairy and hormonal and embarrassed balanced but I think he likes me and I think that that's what matters at the end of the day because I do feel like I am under his protection and in the midst of all of this crazy stuff I do feel protected all the time and all the time like God is good like that nigga really is good go off Scott daddy you've been doing some sometimes you know what I'm saying so I do feel protected all the time and like the rejections that I feel like they never hurt long because I'm like, okay, God is protecting me. He's helping me. He's he's bringing me closer to what I actually want. And I think like this newfound confidence as not newfound, sorry, wrong use of that. But this confidence that I feel my ability to be alone and in my own company and have fun in my own company. I think that it's actually going to make the journey for me to find my soulmate easier because because I'm not settling. And like, and you know, like I was talking about this with my friend last night. I get approached. Men look at me all the time. I Like when I went out, girl, I had like three niggas ask for my number. Did I give it? No. Because I was like, okay, like low-key, like some of you are not my type, but also like, I don't want to get to know anybody right now. Like low-key kind of, I don't know what's going on with that, but we're not talking about that. But I know that like. I just know that, not me getting flustered real quick, let me get my thoughts together, per, um, I think it's going to make it easier in the long run for me to wait for my person instead of feeling rushed and feeling scared and like I'm running out of time. Because like the thing is like I feel like a lot of like oh my god even watching Love is Blind not to like go over time right now because I'm trying to keep this under an hour but even watching Love is Blind so many of these couples were forcing it. They're fucking forcing it. Forcing themselves to like somebody that they barely have chemistry with. And like you have not seen the man on the other side of the wall and you are already making excuses for his fuckery are you kidding me are you kidding me when I tell you I high key I want to fight most of the women and men on this show love is blind we got a tussle the casting director duel to the death bitch like oh my god whoever did the casting I don't like you Unless it's casting Kaz on TikTok, then I will reconsider. Whoever did the casting, I don't like that. Like, I feel like they knew what they was doing. They didn't want people to find love this scene. They wanted chaos. They wanted trending topic on Twitter. They said, oh, you want, you got a love story last season. You're going to get some fucked up shit this season. But watching these people like settle like this, how you settling with somebody you never even saw? Oh my God. I would un- like that really, really, really grinded my gears. You are telling me you heard Shane's voice, his congested ass voice, and you fell for him. Are you kidding me? It's not even a sexy voice. She's like, uh, Shayna, oh my God. Like, uh, like, what do you want to do about it? Like, oh my God, I despise him. I despise him. It pissed me off. You, you are, fa- I can't, I can't go too deep into this because I will just keep going on. But these people, the base of the problem is they don't really want to get to know somebody. They just want somebody. I refuse to be that person. Because I have such a vision for my life and I'm working so hard to get there. And I'll be damned if my partner does not match my criteria. And when I say my criteria, I really want people to understand. And I want women to understand as well that 
when you're looking for a partner, I and this is coming from an unmarried bitch, but this is just what I understand and what I have said for myself. I'm not asking anything that I wouldn't give myself. I'm that I'm not asking for anything I wouldn't give to myself. I want to give myself a nice life. I want to give myself a matted out Rolls Royce. That's the first thing I thought of. I thought of Kim Kardashian's car. I, mean, I don't like Rolls Royces, but whatever. I want to give myself a matted out Mercedes. I want to give myself two matted out Mercedes. I want to give, you know what I think? When I think of luxury, when I think of opulence, you know what I think about? I think of those houses that the landscaping, they got the concrete blocks with the grass trimming around it. Uh Uh-huh. That's what I think about. I think about home and gardens. Uh Uh-huh. I think about architectural digest. That's what I I think of that backyard. I think of Kylie Jenner's backyard, how it's like she has the cement squares and the grass in between. Because you know how fucking expensive those things are? They're very fucking expensive. I will let you know right now. I've looked it up. I have. I've tried to budget for it with what house? In my imaginary house that I bought on Zillow. Duh. I've tried to budget for it. I, when I, when I think of opulence, I think of a black tile onyx tub. Okay. I think of a rose quartz sink when I think of opulence. So those are things that I'm giving to myself. At some, not right now, not today, maybe, maybe tomorrow, you know, if something crazy happened. But those are things that I give myself, that I promise to give myself. Why would I want to be with somebody who can't do that same thing for me? Who couldn't do the same thing for themselves? Why? Because I'm scared to be alone? Because I'm scared of how it looks that I'm alone? Why would I not want to wait to be with somebody that can give me the security that I could give myself? To give me the love, the patience, the kindness, the dick, the money, the all of it that I deserve, that I could give myself? Yeah. We have objects for those things now. Per. Why would I not just wait? For the man that can give that to me, instead of taking some rusty, dusty, crusty, musty, busty, pusty, little half, probably meeting like 20% of those things. I mean, he could give dig. All men can give dig. At the bare minimum, that's what he could give. Maybe he's decent. Maybe he's nice. Yeah, I'll just settle for that because I don't like how it looks that I'm alone. I don't, I don't want to be alone. No, no, that's just absolutely something that I refuse to do. I just refuse to do it. And I think because I know that these are all things that I can give myself. And then I've made the promise for a long time that I would give myself. I don't necessarily need a man to give it to me. I want a man to give it to me. I will always give it to myself. But a man is supposed to add something to your life. Because like, honestly, think about it. When was the last time a man ever made your life better? When was the last time you had a guy that didn't make you cry? That's a real fucking question. I think about that one a lot. So why, if all men do is destroy and make me cry and, you know, maybe like give me like half an orgasm every once in a while, mm, am I really going to settle like that for the long run? No, I'm causing myself more issues. I want what I want. I believe in what I want. I believe in myself and I know Sky Daddy is going to throw me a bone at some motherfucking point. And I'm going to get it. I really do believe that. I, re- even <laughs> you know that's how that boy is gay, and I really do believe that. Divine's gonna get what she wants, and I really do believe that. I'm calling. So, yeah, I feel really rejuvenated in all my stuff. And you know what's crazy? I'm on my period. Isn't that wild? I'm on my period. I'm feeling all kinds of positive. That's why you know shit is crazy. Because when I'm on my period, I regularly be feeling a little suey. You know what I'm saying? She be feeling like she wants to die. She be feeling like she wants to jump off of a bridge. You know what I'm saying? She be feeling all kinds of negative things. So I'm really shocked and surprised. And this is a very bad period as well. She's trying to kill me right now. I feel like I've got a baby cracking in my tummy. At the moment, just trying to rip my flesh out. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I feel good. I feel rejuvenated. I feel hot. I feel sexy. I feel confident. I feel like Maddie Perez when she's not dealing with Nate's dumbass. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. It, it, yeah. I had a good week. So, as always, I love you, babes. It's been a good conversation. I love you so much. Thank you for sitting here and listening to me talk for this hour. Um, It was fun. And I, I feel really good. And I, 
I really hope that this is a great episode and I think it will be. So I'm excited to post it. Um, but as always, if you're listening on Apple podcast, take a moment and please leave me a review. They really do help with the algorithm and analytics and all that. So take a moment, leave me a review, um, leave a like, leave a rating, um, leave a like, leave a rating. What am I saying? Leave a rating, leave a review. If you're listening on Apple podcast, if you're listening on Spotify, leave a rating, share it with your friends, share it with your mom, share it with your bestie, share it with your dog. If they got posable thumbs and can listen, share it with your grandma. Some of y'all got cool grandmas. I ain't even going to lie. So share it with your friends, share it on social media, whatever you want to do. Go ahead and do it. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, like, subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I post. Um, if you are on Instagram, follow me on Instagram at Vinefilo. I don't know why I'm having a hard time doing this outro. It's like I forgot how to do the outro. That's weird. Um, follow me on Instagram at Vinefilo, V-I-N-E-P-H-I-L-O, and on TikTok at Defile, D-P-H-I-L-E, and on Twitter where I am utterly chaotic at WordS, W-O-R-D-E-S, okay? And if you're watching on Spot, if you're watching on Spotify, you see what's happening. If you're listening on Spotify, follow, okay? Follow, leave a rating, send it, whatever. I, this was the worst outro I have ever done. Am I even going to attempt to fix it? No, because it's getting cold and the bugs are coming in because I have the window open. But thank you so much for listening. I love you so much. I hope your week is amazing. I hope you're loved. I hope you feel accepted. I hope you feel comfortable in your skin this week. I hope it clicks for you like it did for me. And I hope you find your comfort. I hope you find your groove. I hope you find your your ability to dance in public like you dance when you're at home, okay? I really think that's such that's a crazy thing. I cannot believe it. Like really life changing when you can dance in public. That's amazing. So I hope you feel comfortable in your skin. I hope you feel happy. I hope you feel joy. I hope you feel love. I hope you feel acceptance. I hope you feel your worth. I hope you know your worth. I hope you feel this hug that I'm sending to you this week. And I hope you feel the kisses that I'm sending to you. So mwah, mwah, mwah. I love you so much, babies. Have a great week and I will see you next week. Goodbye.